It's been an interesting week for the Las Vegas Wranglers. On one hand, Joe Fallon and Josh London can now join the ranks of Las Vegas Wranglers who are up in the AHL, including the likes of Eric Lampy and Peter MacArthur. But on the other hand, the team just keeps on winning. After taking two of three from the Aces up in Alaska, Las Vegas swept the Idaho Steelheads in two games in Boise, capped off by a very impressive three-goal comeback victory in Mitch O'Keefe's first start since Joe Fallon went up to the A. I caught up with a couple of the boys and asked them not only about these past few games, but also about the upcoming series against the now Pacific Division leading Ontario Reign. All right, TK, now two more wins this weekend after taking two of three in Alaska. You guys are 6-1 and one in your last seven. Everything seems to be rolling. What's cooking on the ice for you guys? I think it all starts uh, in the dressing room. You know, all the guys are joking around, and whenever you're winning, there's more fun in the dressing room, more fun off the ice. And you know what? The guys are just having a good time. You know, uh, with everyone being called up, guys are stepping up, and we're all just working hard. There's a little more ice time to go around, and everyone is just having a good time right now. It's fun. And then uh, this weekend, obviously, big series. You guys won 5-1, to one, game one, crushed them. Second game, though, started off a little slow, down 2-0. Comeback win, though, you guys scored three in the third. We'll start off with you specifically. I know you finally got that first goal of the season. What a time, too. We tied it up at two. Walk me through that play and, and talk about what that was like for you. Well, uh, the guys were all uh, chirping me before the game, telling me to get rid of the goose egg in front of my name. So... <laughs> But uh, to be honest, when Smitty came around the net, I didn't even realize, like, when the puck hit my stick, it, I shot it off so quick, I had to double take to see if it went in or not, because I'm not used to scoring so much. So <laughs> I had to get a uh, double take in there, but when I scored, I was just so happy, you know, Judder, uh, Smitty, Bo, and uh, Fritchie were just all around me right there when it happened, so it's great. It looked pretty exciting, mm -hmm. and that excitement continued as Blackwater netted the winner. You guys uh, finished the comeback, win 3-2. Talk about, you mentioned the locker room, a win like that, comeback in Idaho, three goals in the final period. What does that do for you guys as a team? Oh, it just our confidence goes through the roof. You know, we can, we can pretty much play with anybody, but when we, like Moosh says, when we step away from our game and we don't do, like, the little things we try to play, maybe pawn hockey and more skill we're not that good of a team but when we do detailed hockey get the puck in deep you know play physical skate because we're a pretty fast team so once we do that you know we can pretty much uh handle a game to ourselves so you know what all year you can't really count us out because we're always usually coming back like i remember a game we were down like six nothing and end up 6-4 or almost 6-5 or something like that. So you can never really count us out. Yeah, and you mentioned the call-ups in the AHL. Uh, you lose your goaltender, Joe Fallon, up the, the that morning, I think, of the Saturday game. Uh, it just adds to the list. I think there's five or six guys up, a Lampy, MacArthur. Uh, the names just keep adding to that list. Is it frustrating for you guys as a team losing players you know, every day, or is it just kind of the nature of the beast? And, and how do you guys keep rolling with the punches as you are? Uh, well, you know, it's a roller coaster, and it's kind of bittersweet because you never want to lose guys. Obviously, the Lundos, Lampy, MacArthur, and then they're all up in the A, and then you guys, and then we have uh, Pakovic, Wes, who are hurt, and Hux is hurt now. So it's it's just tough, but you know what? We just got to stick together. You know, guys, like I said, guys are happy. Guys know what it takes to win, so it just and we like playing with each other. Anybody can play with anybody on this team, which is great. And then uh, more on that AHL, you get a guy back finally. Judd Blackwater comes back. He'd been with Abbotsford since uh, December. What is it like to get get someone like him back in the lineup? And what makes him so special? I mean, he had three points in that come from behind win. Uh, what's it like being on the ice with him? What does he bring to this team? A Judder can pretty much dangle in a phone booth, so <laughs> it's amazing. He's an unreal player. He should be up in the A. He should be sticking, but, you know, we're fortunate to have him back, and he's just a huge part of this team, and it's great to have him. All right, Judd, first of all, welcome back to Las Vegas. Uh, been up in Abbotsford for the past couple months now since uh, December, late December. Uh, just talk to me a little bit before we get into the team and how everything's going down here, just about the whole process, what it was like, uh, exchanging between both uh, both teams and maybe some of the differences or similarities between both clubs. Um, well, obviously it was, a, it was really good to get up and – play um i think i finished with 18 games up in abbotsford and you know it was, it was a really good experience had a great time um but also at the same time it was i think it was time to come back i wasn't playing as much and i i know we were losing guys down here getting called up and injured so it was good to come back and see the boys again i think i uh i met them in alaska and then we had a they won early on uh, i think it was a wednesday and then friday and then the last game was obviously it was, it <laughs> yeah. was a 
Yeah, it was unlucky. And good timing, though. You mentioned you come back right in the middle of Alaska. I think you mentioned we're losing some players. That's a bit of an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> We've got no uh, quite a small roster. But, uh, yeah, you get thrown right into the flames, really, right in the middle of a huge, always huge, when they go up and play Alaska. First game back, you, uh, you score a goal, kind of. It looked to be a goal. Do you remember that play? Walk oh, me yeah. through that. Did you see that it looked like it went in? Yeah, well, it went in for sure. I was <laughs> I was 100% positive it went in as soon as, you know, as soon as the – Puck came right back out, but um, uh, Diller went to clear it, and Millsy picked it out of the air. He made a great play, and um, we went in two on one. He gave me early. I cut to the middle and uh, used the demon as a screen, and it went. It actually, well, you see it as a replay. I didn't see the com- the full thing at the start, but it goes back bar like twice, and then pops right out. And I put my hand in the air right away because I knew it was in. So did Millsy. And um, we just started celebrating. Everyone, I think everyone in the whole place knew it, was went, it went in. The uh, their team let's just stop playing because they they knew it was in too. And we celebrated. And then they, I don't know the ref. He was at the other end of the ice. He was too slow. He couldn't catch <laughs> up. And somehow they disallowed it. And uh, I was like, whatever. I'll just you know play through it. Play through it. Like but, like the boys were upset. Yeah, Luge was losing it. So. We actually watched uh, the replay I can't, a couple of days later and uh, it may or may not have gone completely around the back of the net yeah, and come and back goal. out. So technically a little congratulations in order. Your first goal in your first game back but uh, it hasn't stopped you. You got five points in your first four games back. You really haven't missed a beat. Um, how important was that game Saturday where you got the game winner in Idaho, especially with what's coming up this weekend, a huge series against Ontario? Yeah, that, I mean, that was huge. We um, we played a collective, you know, group game both nights. The um, <clears throat> second night they got off, and I think they scored a couple, you know, lucky goals. And we were, we were kind of down going to third, and, you know, the leaders in the group, the uh, – you know the Dillers and the boys. They they really stepped up and they said, you know, we got to win this game. It's I- Idaho, and you know they're not, they're not doing so well. And we're you know we're gonna have a tough series coming up, and we need these two points. So we came out in the third, and you know we just kept putting pressure on, and eventually we scored some goals and luckily got the W. Yeah, it was an impressive win, and all the more important, especially with the series coming up. Uh, Ontario, they've been on a hot streak for the past couple of months now, and they've vaulted all the way up the standings. They're now in sole possession of first place in the Pacific, something that you guys have held since uh, the beginning of the season. But uh, talk to me about what the keys are going to be against this Ontario mm-hmm. team that's really on a roll, and, and, and what's going to be the most important thing for you guys to have success down there? Um, well, I think, you know, they've had their, their group since, like, start of the season. You know, they haven't had much uh much adversity to battle through they've had the same guys and we you know we're you know we're down to like eight or nine for it something ridiculous and i think we just gotta you know play uh play smart i think like we can't we're obviously not gonna have as much energy because we have so much uh we're so short on the back end and, mm-hmm. and the forward so we gotta play smart and um everyone's gotta contribute all right well good luck the rest of the way thanks again Jeff. All right, Mitch, obviously, Saturday night, first big start since uh, Fallon got called up to the AHL. Really no rest for you guys, so right back into the thick of things. Huge weekend series coming up against Ontario, who basically have been on fire for what seems like years now. <laughs> they just won't stop winning. Uh, you've played against them a couple times this year already. What makes them such a tough team to line up against, and why have they been so successful? Uh, well, they got a lot of depth in their lineup, uh, and they got a lot of tough guys to play against that get pretty gritty, and it's always been a pretty big battle against them. and. They have a system that works for them right now, and they're just rolling with it. And they're a good playoff team, and it's going to be a good race till the end. I think for first place, and it's going to be exciting. And then uh, flashback to this weekend against Idaho. Uh, Fallon starts Friday night. You guys take the win five to one. But then Saturday morning, before the game Saturday night, Fallon gets called up, and then it's your go. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how you found out. Walk me through that, and then a little bit about being a goalie in this league and how you really have to, I guess, stay on your toes all the time, knowing any minute you could be the only goal left on this roster yeah that's the funny thing about playing in the east coast but uh no it was a great uh Fowles deserves to be up there he's been playing great all year and it's his time to get up there and i guess he'll play a lot too which is great for him and uh it was great uh finding out that i'll get to play and get to run with it a little bit here because i've been hurt all year so looking forward to it. i'm excited about the opportunity and it should be a lot of fun and then how about that you mentioned you've been hurt a little bit this year Are you feeling good everything everything going well for you yeah, everything so far i've been doing a lot of work with q and getting better so it's 
this is the best I felt all year. So yeah, that's excited. that's important. Um, and then Saturday night, that game, what a game, really. You uh, you played very well, uh, down two nothing though in the third period, but then the boys pulled it out again. You know, which has uh, become kind of commonplace for these guys. Uh, what does that win kind of say about the team you have in the locker room and the fact that really all year long these games are really never over until the final buzzer sounds? You guys are never out of them. Yeah, that's a great thing about our lineup right now. We have a lot of guys up in the A and. We have such depth on our team. We can win with whoever we have, I find. And we all believe it, too, which is great to have. And you get a good feeling in the room, and you just roll with it. So it's perfect right now. And then uh, the AHL, your Fallon's up there as well. But so are a couple of your defenders went up. Uh, Fritchie went up. And now Barry's uh, back up again. You played behind Barry this year. I talked uh, earlier with Fallon, I think, earlier this year. What makes him so special, though, uh, back there in the defensive end? Uh, he's been such a cog all season long for you guys. Yeah, the thing with Barry, he has so many weapons. He can score, he can shoot really well, and he can play, and he can hit. And he's really effective, I think, at every level of play. That, so. Cool. And then uh, right here, obviously, we've got the mask, the new Mitch O'Keefe mask. Talk to me a little bit about that, uh, the little local flair, kind of some Vegas things going. Now, how long have you had this for? Uh, I've had it about for a month now. I got it designed back home from uh, the person who does Luongo's math, the mask. Uh, it's uh, Eleni Rose. Uh, and she does a lot of great work in the NHL, and she sent me a, a few clips and thought this one was the best had the red hair on it so. <laughs> that's true i like it well hopefully uh the good luck keeps up and uh you guys keep winning good luck this weekend man Thank you the Wranglers will make their way down to Ontario on Friday for a two-game set that starts on Friday night and concludes on Saturday night against, right now, the current Pacific Division leading Ontario Reign. Las Vegas won't head back home, however, until Sunday, March 18th, just in time for the St. Baldrick's Day game here, where Las Vegas will be donning specialty St. Patrick's Day jerseys, and players, coaches, and front office staff alike, including myself, will be getting our heads shaved on the ice both during and after the game. Be sure to check out St. Baldrick's org where you can search for the Las Vegas Wranglers as a team and help support the cause by donating money to your favorite Wranglers players, coaches, or your favorite Las Vegas broadcaster. That's all I've got for you here on your Wrangler Recap. I'm Ian Tasso, signing out.